I would say it's really the market. It's not really, I wouldn't really put too much blame for the creator themselves. Whether it contains violence or not, yes and no. Yes and no. It's usually a yes or no. When it comes to producing uh, violent content uh, to the consumers itself, I would say it's actually a two-way uh, responsibility. That kind of specific influence that strives a developer to create violent content, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Because uh, from the past, we're looking at the history of entertainment, it's been pretty bloody to begin with. So it's, either, it's both the, the person who made it and the person who appreciates it. So you can't just put the blame entirely on the developer himself. You have to look at the end of the person who wants it. Game designer. When they design games, do they have uh, certain control over how much violence they can release? Yes. Right. Violent content is a sub-product of the greater piece that they want to create. Whether it's if it's a you know it's a video game about heists, let's say like bank heists, where you have to deal with the cops. You know, you're not gonna create a game where if you wanna deal with the cops, you can play rock, paper, scissors with them. If they lose, they fall down. That doesn't make any sense within that. Whatever the game designers try to present in that message, right? They have their own message. But the most important thing is try to make the game as fun as possible. Okay, so the player would at least stay and finish the game and understand the final content of the game itself. Okay, so yes, as for the content, the vision is very important. So when you talk about moral and social obligations of a game developer to society, they actually depict the same moral obligations and social obligations that exist within the rest of the community as well. So when you talk about moral and social obligations of a game developer to society, whatever the game designers try to present in that message, right? They have their own message. They actually depict the same moral obligations and social obligations that exist within the rest of the community as well. The most important thing is try to make the game as fun as possible, okay, so the player would at least stay and finish the game and understand the final content of the game itself. Okay, so, yes, as for the content, the vision is very important. Produce what they envision. Yeah, they're quite um, involved. Except again, they have to negotiate with the party involved. You should be looking into game publishers. If game developers want the outrage game with a main character, let's just say one title from, from the publishing company of Capcom, where did a, one of the developers uh, that they hired wanted to pitch this game called Remember Me, whose, whose protagonist was a female character in France. So. The first thing one of the publishers did mention was they don't want it because the, fe the protagonist is female. I'm like, what? <laughs> the slight masculinity bias within the by the publishing client or the investing client. And there's actually another party to be considered as well, the person who is investing in the product itself. They practically have a slightly bigger say compared to the developing group. But I wouldn't put the blame entirely on them because they are technically a consumer themselves. So we have a type that just plays in, a type who um, pays the development team to do it. If you ask me, it really it depends on the society at the time whether they can accept it as a formality or not. So far, the maturity rating in the title, you know, certain types of stuff is a PG rating like um, 18 plus perhaps. I think it's doing a good job since at least parents know which game to choose for their kids if children is the thing to worry about. But you gotta understand, um, video games is not just for kids. Majority of it is actually for adults. It depends on the publisher. It also depends on censorship of the country. It depends as well. So, like, if I were to develop a game that talks about Malay Bommel, the Malaysian censorship will definitely ban that. This one time, uh, development wanted to 
create an MMORPG about Malacca. So they have different classes such as the Sila Warrior and the Malay Bone and stuff like that, or Tradesman. Oh. But what happened was the publishers hated it because there is magic in the world. <laughs> the whole game is actually cancelled. It's really what you're trying to go for. It's what you're trying to target. What's your target market? What your idea is? And the idea itself balanced with the social responsibility, ethics, or any message around the world. The game is under translated in a way that it's all fancy and shiny and fantasy type. I tell you this: the media, the last media right now is a bit screwed up right now. They <laughs> put the blame to the developers mm. because they produce some kind of violent nightmare or something for kids. Or something. Technically. I kind of disagree with it. Okay, so it really appeals and allows players to dig deeper in because it really pulls their interest. Hey, what is this world? Where really? there's an issue about uh, the Russian, yeah, yeah, the Russian. Yeah. How can you translate that into a game and let people know uh, this is what what's going on? So they did something like play game and kill people, uh, kill aliens or anything like that. But what's the point of that? It really depends on who the game product is targeting for. If it's targeting for a person enjoys war games, then that's them. I think the bigger issue is whether or not the game product that they deliver um, fulfills the objectivity of it to the particular uh, community who appreciates it more. So behind that all the actions, right, that's the message we're trying to recruit. So social responsibility part, we have to take it to a certain degree until it matches with the concept. Because it's more easier to appeal to them. Mm. Okay, since they can relate to it, okay, since they can understand what is it, okay, and that's the message we can deliver. So I guess the mistake occurs when people who notice things that might offend them in a way. For instance, one in the past when Pokemon came out, um, some of the Christian churches in America started suing Nintendo because one of the characters I think is called uh, African Capron oh. has this little pagan symbol on his forehead, mm. which is technically in Star David. Above the world